These were the warm, bright days of our innocence in Delano. New, fresh, stepping along with the times. We had no way of knowing that the nightmare was already beginning. No one heard the sound of that shovel digging in unmarked graves. No one ever saw that dark figure moving in the lantern light of the body of a young man, unknown around here, dead and buried in secret. Just an easy Sunday stroll from our town square. We couldn't have known. I ask you to believe that. A matter of urgent city business called me away from my desk at the bank one afternoon in May of 1924. It's hard to think of anything being urgent in a town as small as Delano was then. I'm Hugh Holmes. I guess I think of Delano as my town. And not that I own it, but I love it. These streets weren't even here, though, just after we all come back from World War I. At that time, I was just a struggling young bank cashier, but I knew when good fortune was smiling at me. When I agreed to buy four lots right in the spot, they threw in the privilege of opening the bank here. The railroad and the mill were my first customers. We built the bank, a school, and three churches first, but by 1924, people being what they are, it was high time to build a new jail and police station. So I called a special city council meeting to select our first police chief. the council to meet me at the new station. The police station without a chief is just another vacant building. Qualified men hadn't exactly been clamoring for the job. Gentlemen, let's uh, call this uh, special meeting to order. Good. Now I move, we adjourn. <laughs> well, come on, Idas. We voted to have a police station and a police chief eight months ago. I say when this place is done, we turn the key over to Sheriff Skeeter Willis. Skeeter is busy with the whole county. The only time he ever comes to Delano is when he's looking for votes. Old Judge Baxter up in the state house made a lot of sense to me. Find yourself a good man, he says. Never mind about his experience. Hire a local man. A man people respect. He can grow in the job. Well, that's fine, uh, but who have we got, Hugh? First application letter was submitted by Francis Funderburg. <laughs> Foxy. Foxy. Foxy Funderburg feels his military experience, as well as his proficiency with firearms, Qualifies him for the job. Foxy Thunderbird's military experience consisted of getting kicked by a horse in England. I hear. It caught him in the head, if you ask me. <laughs> I assured Mr. Thunderbird we would give his application due consideration. All in favor? Opposed? Hey. Hey. The uh, second letter I have here is from... Will Henry Lee. Will Henry? Well, I'll be darned. Pretty good man for a pretty poor job. Yeah. What happened? Did the bull weevil do him in? Will Henry never had much luck farming cotton, but he stuck with it. I was ready to renew his loan at the bank, but he finally decided to get out before he got in over his head. I liked Will. He was a good man, like his daddy. What was different in this boy's coming by in a bit and help me with that piano? You tell him I appreciate it, huh? I sure do, that. Now, Nellie, if you ever want for anything, you come to us now. We're not going to be that far. Sure. But this place don't seem the same already, Miss Carrie. I know. I know. Quilty blanket. Oh, heaven's sakes, that quilty blanket run hard from you already. It's up here in the car, Eloise. Is 
Jesse. Your little Joshua gonna have to keep the place up. Mr. Holmes is counting on you till he can rent it or sell it. Well, it won't be the same without you, Mr. Will Henry. You and me, we worked this land together many years. Are you a good farmer, Mr. Will Henry? Good, not good enough now. To beat the bow weevil, you got to be both good and rich. Now, that's the truth. Jesse. Paul Spence had his eye on this place for some time now. Probably gonna go for cows and peaches. Paul Spence? He asked for y'all to stay on now. You remember something about Paul Spence. He's a man who likes a lot of yasses and noses. Yeah, sir. Well, we got to be going, Jesse. Where's little Billy at? He with Joshua? I think he went back to say his goodbyes to old Dapple. Him and that horse gonna be do some pining away. Eloise, run back, get your brother. Give him a minute, Will. It's important. Come on, Eloise. I want you to show your mama. Where's Mel C? That's good now. Where's that? Oh, show me the A. Now try to see again. about old Dapple Billy. I take real good care of him. That's a promise just between you and me. Be sure he gets a carrot every day. He likes carrots. Even if I have to steal one. Thing. Let's just hope it's right. Well, it'll be nice having close neighbors, I think. Trading recipes, a little lively gossip every now and then. You know, Carrie, honey, you're probably about the best cook there is in the state, and the worst liar, but thanks anyway. You're welcome. Sure glad my daddy isn't alive to see us now. Being chased off the land by a little old weevil no bigger than a tick. You talk to me, honey. I'll talk to you. Daddy, what's the chief of police? Well, Eloise, I don't rightly know. I reckon I'm gonna find out when I have to start acting like one. Replication was submitted and voted on, Foxy. I'm sorry. I do a good deal of business at your bank, Mr. Holmes. And it's much appreciated. Well, as much as it could be, apparently. I surely don't think I'd let bank business influence the council's decision. You know, I mean no offense by this, Foxy, but folks in town just don't know you very well. They tend to regard you as something of a recluse who prefers to live up here alone in Pine Mountain with your dogs. Fine dogs, to be sure. Your bred golden labs are not mere dogs. Well, I won't dispute you on that, Foxy. But there's also no dispute in the fact that you don't even live in Mainbridge County. This place is in Justin County. You'd have had to move even to accept the appointment. Isn't that the truth? It was a bad decision. Very bad. Picking a farmer. This assignment requires someone with training and discipline. What do you expect a green cotton farmer to do when there's real trouble? you go fooling around with a nigger girl again, you ain't gonna heal up so fast.
Tommy? Well, nothing, Skeeter. We's just holding a little lesson on inbreeding with niggers, that's all. Well, far be it from me to interfere with some young man's schooling. Yes, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Any one of you gentlemen got a bottle? Get a little chilly out here tonight. You solemnly swear to uphold the laws of the city of Delano, this sovereign state in the United States of America, so help you God. I do. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you. Good luck, Will Henry. Thank you, sir. We're mighty proud of you, Will Henry. Thank you. Mighty Appreciate proud. it. Go to it, Will Henry. Good luck. Good luck, Will Henry. Thank you, sir. Well, Chief, looking forward to working with you. Thank you, Skeeter. T.T. Brown from the Capitol will be through in a couple of days, and he'll outfit you with anything you may need in the way of equipment. Good, good. As long as you don't go over budget. Okay, Iris, I won't. Good luck, Will Henry. Thank you. Say, uh, Will Henry, I know you're not used to carrying a gun, but we can't have our police chief uh, walking around naked. This old coat bunt line ought to serve the purpose until your regular equipment gets here. Been in my family a good many years, but... I don't know how long since it's been fired. You can see there's no notches in the butt. Yeah. I probably won't have to fire this at anybody. Just uh, show it to somebody to scare them to death. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to cast a cloud over the ceremony there, but uh, I got the council to vote you an extra $5 a month for insurance. You don't mean life insurance, do you? Well, you got a family to think of. Well, that's, that's true. I, I reckon that's a good idea. I appreciate it, Hugh. <laughs> Carry an umbrella, it never rains. Yeah. Well, I, I expect the biggest danger I'm going to have around here is getting kicked by a mule in Saturday traffic. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's so, you better steer clear of Ben Birdsong's team. They're a little ticklish. You know, speaking of traffic, we could use one of those uh, new automatic signals on the corner up there. Well, I do. Capture those bank robbers, everybody in town knew Will Henry, but nobody knew about the nightmare going on among us. Dishes or break them? I can't help it, Will Henry. I'm still shaking like a leaf. Look, honey, those O'Brien brothers were drunk to the gills. That shotgun they had wasn't even loaded. A shotgun? Um... <laughs> and life insurance. Well, I wish you hadn't even told me about that. I thought it was mighty decent of the council to vote it for me. I suppose. You suppose? Look, honey. The worst thing that's probably ever going to happen is I might have to drag some drunk out of the depot or chase somebody out of a prize watermelon patch or write up a report on a broken window. However. I got you. <laughs> However. 
Time may come when things aren't all that innocent. That time ever comes, and I got to put myself in jeopardy. I don't want to worry about you worrying about me. You're right. You're right. But when that T.T. Brown fella delivers your police pistols, we're going to drive out in the country and we're going to practice. I mean, you're a good shot, Will Henry, but I think you should be the very best. That's my gal. Don't shoot, don't shoot. I got you. Put your hands up above your head. You're under arrest. Billy! Point that gun at the ground, son. Come on now, point it to the ground. Slowly. Now give me the gun, son. That's a real gun, you hear? That is not a gun to be making believe with. You understand? Huh? Come over here, both of you. Now, you remember what I said? You remember what I said about the gun? I don't remember. What did I say about the gun, Billy? You said it was real. That's right, son. And don't you forget it. Now, you take it, you've put it back where you found it. Take it, Billy. Go on, take it. You remember. Don't you ever touch it again, you understand? Yes, sir. All right, Joe, go on. farming the old Lee place by then. He'd managed to survive the boar weevil by switching over to peaches and milk cows. He wanted to buy that farm, but I'd only rent it to him. I couldn't tell you why. Maybe it was his nature. Oh, Spence had a natural meanness about him I didn't like. His boy Emmett was cut from the same stick. Jesse, come over here. Now, I ain't running no charity picnic for you like Will Henry Lee did. I'll be having the manager stay on here in the main house. If you want to stay on, you can have a patch of ground to grow your own vegetable, some butter and eggs now and again. And if you put your back to the tree planting, you may even make yourself a few dollars. We'll see. Well, yes, yeah, sir. We'll do real good. I hear tell that woman, that boy, you ain't got quite a mouth on him. I don't want to hear none of it. You understand that? Yes, yeah, sir. All right. I'll tell you what. For starters, you can make yourself a few extra dollars by selling me that horse there. Go ahead and sell him. Don't matter no how. Spavin' like he is. Take a 
boy says that the horse has got spavins, Daddy. <laughs> you tried to pull one over on me, didn't you? Uh, no, sir. You ever try that again, I'll fix you. Get to work. Get out. Joshua, you have a quick mind. And a quick tongue, just like your mama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Flashlight, foul sail. Take a moonshine out of the woods at a quarter of a mile. Doubles as a billy club in case you need it. Service revolver, 38, six inch barrel, more accurate than a four inch and better balance. No need for a 45, unless you're fond of cannons. Guess not. Well, I'd say you are now equipped with the tools of the trade, Chief. Well, I, uh, I reckon so. You look about right, Sheriff. You know your business, T.T. I guess you're saving the gold for last. Best to last. Here we go. Compliments of T.T. Brown Police Service. No charge on the invoice. T.T. Brown, president and owner, hereby presents you with your badge of office. The first one there is for your jacket or blouse. Next one for your cap. And the third one is a spare for your wallet when you're not in uniform. It looks right nice. Thank you, T.T. My pleasure. You have my card and catalog. I'm through this way. Have a two months. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good seeing you again, Skeeter. Take care of yourself, T.T. Yep. Thank you again. Listen, has your wife given you the speech yet? You're the one about being careful. Oh, well, uh, we discussed it a little, yeah. Uh-huh. <coughs> Now, that hurt, didn't it? Right now, you don't feel like turning around doing the same thing to me, do you? I could have explained that to you for a week, and you wouldn't get it. You always got to be ready for somebody to try that on you. Some nice fellow you stop for speeding, and you don't know he's got a trunk full of white lightning. All right, all right. I'm sorry, Will Henry. It just ain't no easy way for me to teach you how to stay alive. T.T. left you this. Let me tell you about it. This is your edge. Don't ever threaten anybody with it. Use it. You hit a nigger with a two by four, he'll hold a grudge for life. You hit him with your blackjack, he figure you're just doing your job. Another thing, you tell somebody to do something, don't argue about it. he will kill you while you're sweet talking him. Get your points, Skeeter. You might as well know. I advise you, Holmes, not to pick you for chief. You ain't got it in you, it'd be hard enough. When the time comes, you ain't gonna be able to keep things straight. Somebody's gonna make you sorry, Will Henry. Just as sure as I'm standing here. Mules could see you now, all dressed up. Mm. It looks nice. Hey, you know, I'm gonna have to get used to wearing a necktie every day of the week now. Of course, I always visualize you in your underwear anyway. Hey, come on now, Carrie. Okay, I lied. I visualize you without your underwear. Mommy, come on! Come on, he's got his tie on and everything. What are they talking about? All right. Never could keep a secret for long in this house anyway. Well, what's this? Oh. Hey. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Love you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you all. And I see old T.T. Brown's been busy around here. He was very nice. I was glad he came by. Well, it's real nice. Thank you. Well, you know, I almost forgot. I gotta run change. 
Hugh Holmes is expecting me down at the station. We got to get ready for the big dedication tomorrow. smell of it. When I was a tad, I used to go on down to the sawmill, smell of sawdust so thick you could almost taste it. I used to dream on what sort of buildings all those boards were going into. Yeah, well, I can believe that. Say, Will, I know there's a little dedication tomorrow morning. It may seem like nonsense to you, but people like to feel proud. They really do. I want them to feel proud of their new police station, their you police chief. <laughs> See, come on along in here a minute. I had my boys bring this into your office just before supper time. Hey, isn't that something? That used to be in your office. I remember that. Sure you do. This desk got me started in banking. It's all yours. Desk and a telephone. Hey, your business. Answer it, chief. <laughs> police station, Chief Lee speaking. What's it? Hey, hey, just slow down, ma'am. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, don't go in the house. I'll be right there. Woman said that uh, Grady Butts is beating up on his wife. Butts is a mill hand. He's steady enough when he's not drinking. Getting seldom. Come on, I know where he lives. Grady, let the boy go to decided to hold this dedication before the start of school and the day shift at the mill so you all could get a look at your new fire and police station on a working day. <laughs> Most of you already know Earl Chapman, chief of our volunteer fire department. <laughs> now we want you to meet your new police chief, Will Henry Lee. Almost the only citizen of Delano who missed that dedication was Brother Maynard, the paper boy. Near the end of his route, he always stopped along the road below Hodo's Bluff to eat his breakfast. He had no idea he was only a few steps away from making a discovery that had haunted him the rest of his years. Buster, want some bacon sandwich? Hey, what are you doing? Bill and 
nice celebration, Will. Yeah, it was. It was. At least the folks know who their police chief is. Well, let's just hope they keep smiling. <laughs> Morning there, Mr. Funderburg. You ain't gonna last long in this job, boy, Henry. You can take that to mean anything you want, and you'll be right. Don't pay any attention to that. Just sour grapes. Foxy wanted your job for himself. I'll say one thing for him. I can't accuse him of being a good loser. Well, I reckon not. I'll see you later. All right, bye-bye. Chief, wait a minute, wait! Hold on there, Brother Maynard. What you so hot about? You gotta go quick. There's a dead boy, Honest. Up at Hunter's Bluff. I saw him. He's dead, Honest. and Dr. Frank Manton were surely accustomed to death in all its usual forms, but this corpse was a mystery. The victim was a stranger in these parts. Besides, Dr. Manton found some bruises on the body that puzzled him. I uh, called Dr. Carter Sauls over the Capitol. He's an expert on postmortems. He said he could be here by 4 o'clock. I had to promise him a chicken dinner before we would agree to make the trip. <laughs> I reckon if we can solve this for a chicken dinner, it'd be a bargain. He wants us to keep the body in a cold room until then, and he asked me for an estimate of time of death. I said about 48 hours, more or less. You fellas think the Klan may have had something to do with this? You know, they have some meetings up here on Pine Mountain sometimes. Well, I did hear they beat up a white boy over there near the county seat not long ago. Something to do with a colored girl. Well, I reckon if I'm going to find the answers by 4 o'clock, I better get going. You want a piece of advice, Chief? What Tommy means, I think, well, I wouldn't go poking around in clan affairs, Will Henry. It ain't good politics. Well, I'm not a politician, Skeeter. I'm police chief, and that boy's dead. Uh, we ain't had any meeting up on Pine Mountain in a coon's age, and that is fact. Besides, Hodo's Bluff, where the boy had the accident, that's over the line in Justin County, ain't it, Will Henry? Well, if that boy fell off the bluff, half naked and beat up, I don't think it was an accident. What I mean is, Will Henry, it isn't your jurisdiction. It isn't mine either. That's Sheriff Grundy's bailiwick over there. That's right. Anyway, I wouldn't rustle my tail feathers trying to find out who did it. That's probably hobos. Hobos? Happens all the time. That boy was probably drifting through another couple of boys or so, and they probably seen something they wanted on him, like a pair of shoes or a shirt or something, and they killed him for it. Hobos always killing each other over whiskey or less. Anyway, you can just forget about the Klan. You can just plain forget about it. A lot of very highly thought of people in the Klan, Will Henry. Just leave them be. They can take care of things that sometimes you can't. Yeah? Well, I don't hold with horse whippings and people that burn crosses to scare innocent colored folk. And I got no respect for a man who hides behind a white sheet. Now, you can repeat that any way you want to. No, I don't hear nothing up here at night, nothing that would interest the police. Why? Well, I've been asking around the neighborhood. He said there was a disturbance over here a couple of nights ago. I thought you might have heard some. I keep all my disturbances inside at night, and in case you're interested. Is, uh, is that one of your disturbances? Oh, most folks think widows are lonely little old ladies. Now, ain't no... Law against being otherwise is a... Now, when did I got time to worry about? Are you a married man? Yes, ma'am. So is Grady Butts. Has he been up here the last couple of nights? He was drunk and I wouldn't let him in. I ain't nobody's private property. Well, I hear tell that uh, he beat up on uh, one of your young disturbances quite a while ago. Yeah. Ain't love wonderful?
Akshay! You're so proud. That's quite a family you got there, girl. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> you see, readiness. You weren't ready. I could have killed you. You wouldn't even have seen me. Well, I didn't come up here expecting to get killed. Exactly. Readiness. Police chief should always be ready for the unexpected. I'll try to keep that in mind. I suppose I should apologize for what I said at the station this morning. Well, no need to do that. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. To be sure. I already told Hugh Holmes I didn't think you were qualified for the job. Now, say what I mean straight out, not behind your back. I prefer it that way. Now, what can I do for you? Well, they uh, tell me there was a disturbance up here a couple of nights ago. I thought you might have heard some. What kind of disturbance? Well, some folks say that the Klan sometimes holds meetings in that field over there across the road. Sometimes, I guess. Not recently. Anyway, not in your jurisdiction. This is Justin County. You're right about that. This is a special matter. Huh? Well, I don't pay much attention to the Klan. They burn a cross once in a while. Keep the niggas thoughtful about their behavior. Those really are nice puppies you got over there. My kids would see them, they'd probably come apart. Your breads. Best in the state. Maybe the country. Well, it's a nice place you got here, Foxy. You take it easy now. Did I tell you about it? Well, are we going to have to wait for your book to come out, or do you have an opinion you'd like to share now? You're new at this, aren't you, Will Lee? Not as new as I was this morning. Well, Chief, for your records, you can report that the victim, uh, white male, about 16, died as a result of a fall. Prior to that, however, the lad had undergone uh, tremendous physical abuse. It probably made a broken neck seem like a blessing. They've been bound hand and foot for an extended period by uh, heavy wire handcuffs. Been beaten methodically on both sides, uh, probably some sort of fixation. Now, the beating was administered by a heavy strap, possibly, but more likely a rubber hose. Now, the rubber hose is a police technique. Footnote. The lab was compelled throughout his torture to sit on uh, some uncomfortable surface. Now, it's hard for me to tell what, but I think it was a heavy rim bucket or maybe even a keg, perhaps. Come on, Carter, what's the rest of it? There's no evidence that the boy had been sexually molested, but I think he escaped prematurely. Not a doubt in my mind that this whole episode wasn't sexually motivated. I don't believe anything like that could happen in Delano. Oh, when you've been chief a little bit longer, I think you're going to find that there's all kind of people in Delano like there is anywhere else. You sit beside them in church, and you pass them on the street, probably even voting for one once in a while. Hey, what, chief? I'll send you a set of the pictures. Uh, 
may need them for your file. shouldn't have said anything to old Foxy, you know. Reckon he thought I was asking. Thought it was real nice of him. He just left it in a picnic basket on the porch with a note. A gift from a friend to the Lee children. Hmm. Billy saw that basket, ran up to the front porch, opened it, saw the dog, and started screaming. I thought he would have been half killed. Yeah, he sure was a beautiful dog, all right. So, uh, what did the big doctor from the big city have to say? The big doctor from the big city said that that boy broke his neck running away from a sex maniac. Some kind of a pervert. Honey, you remember the other night when I arrested Grady Butts? You know what that kid of his said to me? He said, I hope you're going to kill him. He wanted me to. a lot of the bad side of people. I mean, I know that. But I'd a lot rather have you dealing with the good and the bad than somebody who doesn't know the difference. I don't know. Maybe Skeeter Willis and Foxy are right. Maybe I'm not cut out for this job. We went into this together, remember? Sunday services were divided into two parts. Inside, there was praying and preaching. Outside, the good Lord forgive us, it was politics. About that time, I was running for the state senate, trying to get all the support I could find. Of course, they only had but the two choices. My only opponent was lying in a drying out clinic for alcoholics. Well, Carrie, uh, what do you think of city life so far? <laughs> well, the houses are closer together, but the children are harder to find. I don't know. Never had to iron creases in my shirts before. <laughs> Any word on that boy yet? No. But I got the photographs from Dr. Sauls. You know, old Skeeter Willis seems to think that that boy was a runaway, riding the rails, got mixed up with a bunch of hobos. Yeah, he could be right, I suppose. I drove by that old hobo camp down by the tracks this morning on my way to church. There's a new batch of tourists down there from who knows where. Well, 
Y'all have a pleasant afternoon. Any of y'all ever seen this boy around here? Huh? You? You seen him? How about you? Look here. Seen that boy before? You ever seen him? Huh? You ever seen this boy before? I'm talking to you! in Michigan. Look at that. See that? That boy's dead. You want to wind up like that on some undertaker slab, hunk? Your folks wondering where you are? No, sir. Well, then you get the hell out of here. You don't come back. I don't want to see you around here again. You hear? You hear? Saturdays were always special in Delano. It was a time for the farmers and the townsfolk to rub elbows, see old friends, trade goods and gossip. Two worlds, colored and white, mingled with an understood separateness on Saturdays. Sometimes there'd be smell of trouble, but somehow Chief Will Henry Lee always seemed to be around. He saw to it that people worked things out unmolested. Of course, some things went unnoticed. When you try to look at the broad picture of a town, you tend to overlook the small undercurrents that can change a whole community. I regret that now. I suppose the highlight of any Saturday, though, was the mule auction. <laughs> it was a mixture of gambling and theatrics that men and boys couldn't resist. Only trouble with town. Too many girls. Yeah, you got one? A girl? Nah, me neither. But I'm gonna get one, though. When? Next Saturday? Maybe Saturday week. Mr. Horse don't let us off. Whatever the other Saturday. Huh, huh, excuse me. You're a young lady, ain't you? Yes, sir. How's your dog? I'll grow that basket I left him in a bit. Yes, sir. He's an awful good dog. We sure thank you for him. You know about Labrador Retrievers? They get big, don't they? They come from Newfoundland and Labrador. Old water up there. Fishermen used them to pull in the nets. Thick hair keeps them warm. Love to swim. Good duck dogs. Your daddy take you duck hunting? No, sir. Well, maybe I'll take you and your dog duck hunting one of these days. You believe all of that fish nets and stuff? Heck, I knew it all the time. You see, they got real cold water up there. Those dogs got real thick here. See? Fifteen, I got now twenty. Anybody can be it. Twenty dollars I got now. It's a nice view. Lead around there. Where everybody can see. I got twenty-five now. Thirty. Anyone go thirty bucks? Eight thirty. I got.
Delano was getting a little more sophisticated around the edges. On the map, for one thing. A slightly bigger dot designating our place in the scheme of things. We were also on a direct route to Warm Springs, which brought us an occasional visitor of national prominence. One in particular, I remember very well. That's <laughs> surely the truth. Good to see you, Hugh. you know who that was? I don't care who that was. That's Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Well, I'd be doggone. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, huh? I voted for him when he ran with Cox for vice president back in 20. Maybe that's why he lost the election. Yeah, might be. Yours, too bad he got infantile paralysis. I bet you he could have had quite a career in politics. Yeah, I don't doubt it. He a little too radical for my taste, but can't help liking him. He's no quitter. I'll surely give him that. You realize he had to have that car rigged up special so he could drive it without using his legs. Really? His family took a place in Warm Springs. They think the water might be good for him. Oh, well, that can't hurt. Mother's maiden name is Delano. He says he likes to think we named the town after him indirectly. Well, that can't hurt either. Oh, Will, the council voted you raise and pay last night, Will. I hope you don't mind. Well, I suppose I can learn to live with that. Thank you, Hugh. Chief. What do you say there, Sheriff? Everything peaceful? Oh, it's been like a church supper around here lately. Well, I just talked to one of Sheriff Gundy's deputies over the filling station a while back. Yeah? Says they got themselves a murder up in Justin County. Murder? Nigger found him early yesterday morning. Half-naked young fella hung up on a fence. Forty-five hole blown clean through him. White boy? Yeah, blonde kid. He's about the age of that boy you found up in Hodo's Buff a while back. See, I would say that the hobos got themselves another one. There's a camp right near there where the boy was found. It's all cleared out by now. Hobos, they always leave their killings for somebody else to clean up after them. I'd best be going. Keep the pace. You too, Skeeter. Skeeter's mention of still another dead boy sent chills through Will Henry Lee. He was sure it was no coincidence. He dug out the notes he kept in that special black notebook and the pictures Dr. Sauls had taken. He knew he'd failed once. If this latest murder was kin to the first, he had to find out he was a police chief. Still, he had to realize that Justin County was not in his jurisdiction. They was walking a tightrope between the two counties, not to mention two sheriffs. is in court. Well, uh, I reckon I'll wait for him. I wouldn't if I was you. Skeeter Willis bet you'd come poking your nose in. Well, let me give you some advice, Chief. You stick to your one-horse town. Now, this guy was killed by some hobo, plain and simple. He stole everything off him but his undershorts, and it all run away by the time we went down there. Where's the body? Probably six feet under by now. Find no more tissue in Underwood. You don't waste much time when nobody's paying for flowers. Well, thank you, deputy. Thank you. 
Everybody been around here since the last rain. The only time you come calling or passing the time of day is when someone's been killed. I don't much like that, Chief Lee. But no offense, Foxy. Yeah, well, I find it downright offensive, I can tell you. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, I figured since you hunt down there by that hobo camp, you might have seen something. Good hunter like you don't miss much. Well, you're right there. As far as I know, there haven't been any nights of the road in that bivouac for over a month now. That's the way I figured it. Maybe you'd like to come by when I have more time. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Oh, uh, by the way, my kids really love that dog. Appreciate it. Don't mention it. I buried him this morning. Why so sudden? Why not? Well, I thought there might be a post-mortem or something. Well, there's no doubt about the cause of death, no mystery about the victim. His name was Frank Collins. His aunt and uncle over in Wayville heard about the shooting. They came over and identified him. The boy ran away from his home in Ohio, they said. Well, why didn't they want to send the body back to Ohio? Said it wasn't practical. They placed a call to the boy's parents from here, in fact. Excuse me, sir. Did you notice any marks on the body, anything unusual other than the gunshot wounds? Yes, bruise marks on the wrists, like he might have been tied up or handcuffed. Well, I wonder if you wouldn't mind writing out a description of those bruises for me, exactly as you remember them, and sending them to me. Well, I suppose I could do that, but it's already been investigated. What do you mean? Well, I asked his kin if they thought the boy had uh, been arrested or something. They said he only left that house four days ago. There's been no record of him being picked up around here, according to Sheriff Grundy. doing here? Hello there, Sheriff Grundy. I was just checking uh, on the death of that young boy. Mr. Underwood here seems to think he had the same kind of marks on his wrist like that other boy we found. All sounded kind of familiar to me. Yeah? And you've been harassing Foxy Funderburg again. He just called me. I don't like you badgering friends of mine. I don't like it at all. Well, all I was doing was asking him about those hobos. You know, there's a camp near there. I think you're misinformed. Now, hold it. Every time a two-bit town hands out a tin badge to a farmer, he thinks he's taking over. Now, let me just tell you something, Chief, so's you're not misinformed. I'm filing a formal complaint with your city council. And that fancy Hugh Holmes, maybe they'll see fit to either fire you or keep you out of my county and in your own little backyard. Why don't you do the duly elected law around here a favor and get on home?
did the right thing, little Henry. Emmett Spence is a bully. He could have hurt somebody. Yeah, but that's not why I whipped him. I whipped him. I whipped him because it felt good. That's right. I'd just taken a whipping from an old hack who called himself a sheriff. His case is beating me, Carrie. And I took it out on Emmett Spence because it felt good. That boy I buried, you remember? Huh? Someone had beaten him because it felt good. And now this boy, this one's been shot. Somebody did that because it felt good. You can't go around upholding the law and punishing people because it makes you feel good. I think Delano's got a better police chief than it deserves. I still think Emmett Spence got the lace and he had come. sacks off and start shoveling. Now, I want every one of them sacks filled and stacked up over on that side over yonder. Uh, Mr. Hoss, mighty bad out there now. Are you back talking to me, boy? Uh, no, sir. Only there's snakes and fever in that slime water now. Exploding? Maybe you just more yellow than you are black. Get on out there. You hear me? and start filling up them sacks. Listen, you want to move your worthless carcass off this farm. Maybe that big chief friend of yours, Will Henry Lee, maybe he'll give you a job as a policeman. <laughs> Jesse braved the threat of snakes and Hoss Spencer's shotgun for days, laboring in that swamp. But the predator that laid Jesse low was a simple mosquito. Malaria turned the world into a swimming hallucination for Jesse. For more than a month, he shook with chills when he wasn't drenched in his own sweat. He couldn't work, so Hoss Spencer ordered them off the farm. Is Mr. Hoss still here? No, Jesse. Mr. Will Henry, Miss Carey, come to see you. Tell Mr. Hoss I'll be up there tomorrow. What's the day? Lie still now, lie still. Try to sleep some. Doctor say he wants you to sleep. Well, he 
He's a little better, and the medicine will help, but Jesse's going to have to suffer these malaria attacks off and on the rest of his life. By the way, Carrie, that was nice of you to get uh, Ida Spray to let him move into this house. Well, that's not exactly charity. Ida expects free carpentry for that rent. Hey, but one reason for Jesse to be slogging around that swamp. Paul Spence took it out on him for the whipping I gave his boy Emmett. You don't know that well, Henry. I'm afraid it's so, Carrie. I heard Hall Spence laughing about it in a hardware store three weeks ago. How can these people live with themselves? It's how they live with each other that baffles me. Miss Butts came in yesterday. I had to take six stitches in her face. I'd have called you, but their boy, you remember, Sonny. Yeah. Well, he'd already taken a two-by-four to his daddy's head for hurting his mama. Good Lord, they're going to end up killing one another yet. Well, it pained me, but it wouldn't surprise me. I tried never to be blind to hardship. I hope you understand that. But I was busy watching Delano grow right before my eyes. New homes, new streets. We had to print new city maps almost before the ink was dry in the last ones. I'm sure none of this mattered to young Joshua Cole. With his daddy sick, he was begging for odd jobs during a quarter here and there. Now and then, he'd get a clean-up job at Rowden's Grocery. When you put a half-starved boy next to a lot of groceries, you surely know what's bound to happen. Give me that boy. You give it here right now. You look here. Now, I'll pay you a quarter for you to clean up back here. Not for you to clean me out. We ain't got nothing to eat at home. Please, Mr. Adams, sorry. Yeah, you crawl and you cry right now, don't you? Now, ten minutes from now, you're gonna be out snickering behind my back, aren't you? I'm gonna let you cool off a little while. I'm gonna let you think it over. Come on, Joshua. Come on. Now, you go on out there. You wait for me by the car, you hear? Go on now. Now, look here, Will Henry. Now, I know his folks are on a hard time, but you can't just let him go. Now, I can't have the people of Braytown thinking they can just walk in and help themselves. Yeah, and I'm not letting him go. Just trying to weigh the severity of the crime. Oh, come on now, Will Henry. Now, you know that I don't want him sent to county camp. But now, isn't there another charge, a misdemeanor? That's the way I see it, too, Ed. Thanks. Mr. Rowden says he's willing to call it petty theft, Joshua. What does that mean, Mr. Will Henry? <sighs> Needs a justice peace. It's going to give you about 10 days. You can work it off by cleaning the streets for city manager Sam Griff. At least that way you'll be out in the fresh air at daytime. You mean I gotta stay in the jail nights? Locked up? All right, all right. I'll tell you what. I'll let you go home tonight. But you got to promise me that you're gonna be here every morning. Okay? You gonna promise? I sure will, Mr. Will Henry. I promise. Oh. Here. Take this. Things get so bad you can't buy food, you let me know, you hear? Yes, Mr. Moore. Daddy's been awful sick again. The medicine only works part of the time. Thanks. Be here tomorrow. 10 o'clock sharp, just as the peak. Come on home now. Chief, if you'll just put your Will Henry on this purchase order. Well, thank you, T.T. <laughs> I'd offered you a seat, but uh, Dooley there's not quite finished yet. Dooley, you do nice work. 
I got an old keen bottom swivel chair that's showing daylight. Now, if you ever work your way up to the Capitol. Nice thing about being a gypsy like me, Mr. Brown. I can hear in any direction I please. Do you have a card? Now, uh, here you are. First week of the month, I'm in the office. Here you go, T.T. Many thanks. See you soon. All right. Oh, <laughs> by the way, Will Henry, you may have a kid or somebody around here going into competition with you. How's that? Well, last month, somebody ordered a couple of pair of handcuffs through the mail. They only gave a box number, box 82. We sent the money back and told him to order through you. Well, he must have found another line of work, because I hadn't heard anything about it. I wouldn't expect so. Yeah. Bye now. All right, bye-bye. Chief Lee here. Morning, Will Henry. Skeeter Willis here. Say, I got a call from the sheriff of Fuller County last night. A runaway boy from up there, a friend of his son's. He took a whipping last Sunday and run away from home. You know, kids. Yeah, uh, which way is he headed, Skeeter? Well, I think Florida. But who knows? He'd probably been hitchhiking down 41. Probably. Your way. Uh, you got a description on him? Yeah, a blonde kid, about 5, 7, or 8. Light complexion. A good-looking kid. Yeah, well, he's probably long gone now, but if you spot him, I'd appreciate you giving me a call. Yeah, I'll do that, Skeeter. Thank you. They've been found hand and foot for an extended period by uh, heavy wire handcuffs, beat methodically on both sides, probably some sort of fixation. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that this whole episode was sexually motivated. Apparently, the lab was compelled to set on some uncomfortable surface throughout his torture. Now, the beating was administered by a heavy strap, possibly, but more likely a rubber hose. Now, the rubber hose is a police technique. Somebody ordered a couple of pair of handcuffs through the mail. They just gave a box number, box 82. Operator. Uh, Miss Bessie, could you give me George over at the post office? Yes, sir, Mr. Will. Hello. Uh, George, it's Chief Lee here. Uh, I know you sort mail this time of the morning. I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Sure. Could you tell me who's got box 82? Sure, I have it right here. That'd be Foxy Funderburg. Thank you, George.
Sheriff Grundy, please. It's Chief Will Lee over in Delano. Well, you tell him when he gets back that I'm on my way over there. I'm gonna need his help in getting a warrant. And never mind for what. You just tell him that I got evidence of a crime that's not in my jurisdiction. And ask him to wait for me, would you? Thank you. Well, Will Henry, that Joshua Cole never showed up this morning for street cleaning. Well, Sam, I don't have time right now. I gotta get over to Justin County. God damn it, Will, I told you not to let him go home nights. Now, He's supposed to be in your custody, and I want him. Will, Henry, I want him now. Have you seen the clutter on Main Street? I've already had two calls this morning. Sam, look, you are the city manager. If you can't manage the city one day without that kid... All right, all right, come on, let's go. Staying home with me one day. Mr. Hawes, open my boy. Don't do that. I tell you, don't do that. It's all right. It's all right, Jesse. Joshua here with you. Come, drink some water. Joshua? Mr. Hawk, I'd no right whipping my boy. Johnny! I'm right here, Daddy. Sick. Uh, I keep uh, Joshua home if I need help. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. You want me to call Dr. Manton? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. What's Mr. Hawes doing here? Mr. Hawes, don't whoop my boy. Got no right. He's going to leave us be. Mr. Hawes, leave us be.
no, no, we didn't, he didn't know. No, Mr. Willis. Foxy, thank God. No. Come over here, help me with him. We, we've got to get him to Doc Man. We gotta go back. No. Tell me now. I just shot horse Dennis, you hear him? It wasn't horse, Daddy. It was Mr. Will Henry. Uh, Mr. Will Henry. Don't talk crazy to me. You ain't talking crazy, Daddy. You shot Mr. Will Henry. Honestly, dear. Mr. Will Henry. God of my Oh no. Joshua, listen to me now. Listen to me good. You got to run for it. Now you get to the highway. I ain't leaving you. Do as I say. They hang a nigga boy for nothing. Hitch a ride to Columbus. Go to your Uncle Tyler there. Daddy. Uncle Tyler, you hear? Now get for the get to coming after you. Run!
Franklin Delano taking root and grow. We weren't old enough to be in any history books, but we already had a second generation that could call the place home. I suppose they must have had a parade in every town in America in the summer of 1945, welcoming our servicemen home from the Second World War. A lot of towns might have had bigger parades and better bands than Delano, but we did our best. Still chairman of the city council, a member of the state senate, and more recently the state board of education. I've been making speeches to two generations by then. I tried not to abuse the privilege. Foxy Funderburg seemed to look forward to parades gave him a chance to wear the old uniform he'd been saving from the moors since World War I. Sonny Butts wore his uniform as though he'd been born in it. Most folks had forgotten his father, a brutal, drunken man, dead in a farm accident years before. But for his mother, this was the high point of a hard life, to see her son honored by the town. <laughs> Sheriff Skeeter Willis was still the law in Mainbridge County. Times were changing, but voting for Skeeter seemed a hard habit to break. given some of our young Negroes a chance to better themselves. Marshal Peters, for instance, had learned a trade in the army. He and his wife Annie looked forward to a business of their own. <laughs> Kerry Lee had fought back as best she could after Will Henry's death. She knew tears couldn't raise two children and put them through college. So she opened her own store, which by then was selling the most fashionable ladies wear anywhere this side of Atlanta. Her son, Billy Lee, was working for a big city law firm when he left to join the Air Corps. He got to be a lieutenant colonel flying airplanes. He didn't have any better plans for his future. I did. Will Henry would have been proud of his daughter, too. Ellie had lost her new husband in the war. She grieved for a while, but there's a lot of her mother in her. They became partners in the shop. But it was the new member of the Lee family I was anxious to see. I'd heard Billy brought back a beautiful English-Irish war bride. about that campaign letter. Oh, I knew you changed it, so I didn't even type it. You raised a couple of smart ones, Gary. Mr. Hugh! Billy, I had to be in Washington when you got back here. Oh, I'm happy to see you again, sir. It's good to have you home, Billy. Thank you, sir. Let me get a proper look at you. Oh, uh, Trish, uh, I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to... Uh, wait just a minute. You let me get this right. You are Patricia Worth Newenham Lee. And you're Hugh Holmes. I knew it. They've been talking about the both of us. Welcome to Delano. You tell me the truth now. How did this rascal lure you to this far place? False pretenses. He told my father he was going to be president of the United States. Well, I had to think of something. All the rest of us suitors had promised her a farm. Yeah, he promised me a bicycle once to help him through algebra. Asked him if I ever got that bicycle. Oh, my. One of the nice things about courting in a foreign country is the absence of baby sisters. 
Now that I've seen the countryside around here, I think I'll hold out for a farm after all. Well, this is a land of unexpected opportunities. Well, Colonel, shall we assemble the troops? Yes, sir. It's hard to find something meaningful to say to you young men who have seen the realities of war on battlefields all around the world. But I want to say, as much as we rejoice upon your return, we can never forget the unpayable debt we all owe to the young men who've fallen fighting for us, who will never come home, to you who have come back. I say, welcome home, all of you. We've tried to keep Delano a decent town, a town you'd be proud to come home to, as a small but tangible way of saying thank you. The city council's voted to offer the first openings on city jobs to returning veterans. As a first step in that direction, the council just this morning appointed the state's most decorated soldier, First Sergeant Sonny Butts, to the vacancy on the Delano Police Force. Stand up and salute, you suckers. Now, Colonel Lee, would you do us the honor of dismissing these gentlemen so they can find out what a Delano welcome's really like? Star in Italy? Is that right? Congratulations. Hey, thank you, sir. We got a good man here, Annie. Yes, sir. That's a fact. There you are, Colonel. I just had what seems to me a first-class idea. Why don't we have uh, Sergeant Peters here? Marshal, why don't we have him assemble the troops this time and you give the speech? Oh, well, I don't know. I, I don't, no, no, no. I'm sure the men would like that, Mr. Billy. All right. I think I'd like to do that, Marshal. Uh, uh, Trish, Mama, Ellie, y'all go on along. We'll join you later. Let's go. <laughs> you look real pretty, Annie. Oh, thank you, Miss Carey. Don't like to sound like a tourist in my new home, but do they always have separate ceremonies like this? That is a good question, Trish, but uh, 20 years ago, there wouldn't even have been a second ceremony. Sheriff Skeeter Willis seemed to approve of Sonny's appointment to the police department. He Never thought much of Officer Charlie Ward there. Right. And, Sonny, do you know Chief Thomas? Or of our agent police chief, Melvin Thomas. Yeah, I'll Hello. see you later, Chief. Well, Sonny, I think you got what it takes. I think you and me are going to hit off first rate, Sarge. You can bet on that, Skeeter. I wish your daddy was alive to see you today. You do? I'd probably have to arrest him for drunk and disorderly. At least he spared us that, Mama. I got your room all fixed up for you. And I'm making chicken tonight special. Not tonight, Mama, huh? I got some relaxing to do. It's been a long time. Well, sure, Sonny, whatever you say. Well, I think I see some wild oats sprout. Why don't you let me drive you home, Miss Butts? It'd be a pleasure. No, no, Thank you. Take care now. Sonny, it's gonna be great having you on the force. Believe you me, we gonna snatch some folks' heads sideways around this town. Just don't you ever grab a hold of me, Charlie. And we get along just fine. Sure, Sonny. Sure. Sergeant, uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Uh, General? You've done a fine job for your country, Sergeant. I understand you were considered for the Medal of Honor. Politic. Yes. Yeah. Well, I want you to know that my experience is always available to you. If you ever need any help, just ask. I'll do that. Yeah. 
fools. I'll be damned. Oh, Foxy Thunderbird. Yeah, he's a little long. If we're going visiting later, I should freshen up first. If you start to look any fresher, I couldn't stand it. <laughs> well, thank you. Trish? Yes? Have you been listening to us? We're being so nice to each other, it hurts. I don't think we should have any unspoken feelings. Now, I lost a husband in the war, and Billy gained a wife. Now, if we go and tiptoe around that for the next 20 years, we're gonna miss out on, on being, well, sisters. I always wanted a sister. So have I. <laughs> Would you do me a favor? Absolutely. I haven't told Billy yet. I can't cook for toffee. Would you teach me on the sly? He's bound to get hungry one of these days. Oh, he'll eat anything with grits. Grits? What's grits? <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of the colored in town still remember it was a colored man who killed your daddy. Women probably also remember he was executed for it. Well, listening to every word you said today, I watched them. Good reaction. I wasn't aware I was making a political speech. Oh, when you get right down to it, every speech is political. <laughs> You've got all the qualifications. Returning veteran, combat decorated officer, farmer, lawyer, with an English war bride to boot for international flavor. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You said farmer somewhere in that list of credentials. Well, it might be arranged dead set and going back with that bunch of big city lawyers you were working for. Well, somehow, I can't quite imagine myself sitting back, making out wills, watching my name creep slowly up in a long list of junior partners on that law firm stationery. I don't want to just watch things happen anymore. I want to make them happen. I... <laughs> Is that another political speech? Well, it'll do. It'll do nicely. You might do well to jot it down. You know, uh, I'm slowing up some, but I still like to make things happen. It's very satisfying. I think I might drop out of the state senate this next time around. I've just been waiting for the right man to come along to take my place. It's a good stepping stone. I've had a lovely day, Billy, absolutely lovely. I've really taken to your mother, and Eloise and I are already sharing secrets. Well, well here's another secret you can share with her. I've I had a rather lovely day myself. I've just been made state senator. I thought you had elections over here. Oh, we do, we do. And you're still going to have to meet every storekeeper and dirt farmer in the whole Tri-County area before then. But in this particular district, one vote elects. And uh, I just got that one vote. Hugh Holmes. That's right. <laughs> and for your benefit, he also said he might have some nice farmland for us to look at. Oh. <laughs> well, we're on our way, my love. And nothing's going to stop us. I mean, absolutely nothing's going to stop us. So nothing's going to stop us now, eh? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just about any which way we want to, Sonny. I ain't kidding. I mean, old Chief Thomas, he got a bad ticker, you know. He tries not to let on, but he goes home every day for a two-hour nap and a lunch, so he won't peel over. As long as we write up enough tickets, keep the niggers quiet and break down, just like we was our own boss. I like that. I like that. Just fine. 
blonde, yellow dress. What's her name? Her name's Charlene. She's from LaGrange. I wouldn't mess with her, though, Sonny. That sailor she's with, she's got a pretty mean reputation around here. They ain't room, but for one mean reputation around here. Charlene's gonna get acquainted. Hey, get lost, Hick. Oh, you just made a big mistake, Swabby. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or what? Mechanics, isn't it, Mickey Shelton? No, sir. I never did much but grease jobs and oil changes for Mickey Shelton. Uh, it was in the Army where I really learned my trade. Uh, he used to call me Dr. Peters. I can get any old half-dead truck back in action. <laughs> Dr. Peters, huh? Well, well, huh? Hey, I, I, I can fix anything that moves on a car truck. How about you, Annie? You willing to... Wash all those greasy rags and keep the books to see he makes a go of it. Yes, sir. I know he can do it. You're a good man, Marshal. I'd like to help. The bank will loan you $1,000 for your down payment on this uh, house and barn. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You uh, come see me tomorrow. I've got another stop to make. I might not get back to the bank this afternoon. Uh, uh, first thing, sir. Mr. Holmes? Oh, uh, by the way, you can uh, start your practice, Dr. Peters, by uh, checking out my steering. It pulls to the left. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, could be the alignment. Uh, you just uh, bring it in any time, and I'll fix it for you. See you tomorrow morning. Thank you, sir. Got to be careful, Marshal. You don't go stealing Mickey Shelton's customers. He's clan, you know. So? <laughs> Nothing's changed around here as far as the clan's concerned. The clan is just a bunch of walking laundry as far as I'm concerned. <sighs> Marshal Peters. Auto repair. All mixed. Maybe you should take it to someone who's more familiar with the workings under the bonnet. A bonnet is a hat. This is a hood. A hood is a Chicago gangster. A bonnet is the cover that goes over the engine. Morning, y'all. Morning. What's going on? I'm giving him an English lesson. Uh, I won't shake your hand. I appreciate that. 
He's repairing the car, only the car doesn't know it. That's all. I wouldn't want uh, Kiri to know I brought this up, but uh, she's just about reached the end of her patience with the two of you still living with her. I'd like to talk to you all about it. You found us a place? A little farm I ran out to. Uh, thought we might take a look at it if you're not too busy. Are we too busy? We're not too busy. We'll uh, take my car. By the way, I know just the man to fix that car. I just come from Marshall Peters in Venice. Is there anything you can't arrange, Mr. Hugh? I don't know, Billy. There just might be. Times are changing. <laughs> In his first three months on the job, Sonny Potts set some kind of record for handing out traffic citations. Sonny also talked Chief Thomas into buying a motorcycle for police work. He claimed it had something to do with economy. Actually, I think it had more to do with visibility. Sonny liked to be seen riding through town, uniform, gun and all. I had no real objection to that, but something about it bothered me. I was born not 50 yards from where you're standing. I know. You grew cotton and you had a horse called Apple. Apple. Horse oh, Spence always wanted to buy this place, but I never would sell it to him. Never thought he belonged here somehow. There are still 641 acres. Well, I guess that would qualify me as a farmer with the voters. Certainly qualify you with me. Mr. Hugh, if we can afford it. Well, as Delano's news to attorney at law, with both the bank and the mill as your first clients, I, I believe we can come to terms. There's just one stipulation. I'd like to make you a gift. The brick for your new house. As a wedding present. I thought about it a long time. I want to give you something that's going to last. <laughs> Sonny took to riding that motorcycle more and more, hunting expeditions for speeders. One day, he decided to try his luck up on the road from Pine Mountain. starting his own police force. Hope you're not cutting these speeding tickets too thin, Sonny. Don't want us getting the reputation as a speed trap, you know? Now, head on home for lunch, Sonny. You hold the fort, huh? All right. Oh, Chief. I've been meaning to ask you about that old roll-top desk back there. Look, if you can use it, it's all yours. That old roll-top desk I gave Chief Will Henry Lee years before had not been used since. Just gathering dust. If it had been sold at the church auction like Chief Thomas planned, some charitable soul would have gotten a shock. There, in Chief Lee's old black notebook, photos taken in the Maddox mortuary with all the details of that unsolved murder more than 20 years back. Those lurid notes about torture, death, seemed to fascinate Sonny. You wouldn't believe me. Caught old Pie back begging for money in the middle of Main Street. 
So drunk he can't even stand up. Oh, he can stand up. Look at him. You ever see a nigger stand up that straight? <laughs> time getting a new home started. Billy was so busy with his new law practice and making plans for a political campaign, he left most of the supervising to her. I had a feeling the house would be the better for that. a new car. Is that right? I thought he might get lost coming out here, so I offered to drive it out and bring you the keys and the papers. Uh, he said you can just mail that paper there back to him. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, don't mention it. Uh, I hear you're wanting to sell the convertible here. Not so much wanting to as needing to. Mind if I take a look-see? Uh, no, no, go ahead. Uh, yeah, engine's been completely overhauled. Something right out of the factory. Who did the work on her, Mickey Shelton? Uh, no, no, Marshal Peters. <laughs> I never seen a nigger yet could fix more than a wheelbarrow. <laughs> well, I don't suppose a lot of them ever had much more than a wheelbarrow to work on. Uh, Marshal learned auto mechanics in the army. He's first rate. Eleanor Roosevelt's niggers. We got along just fine without them, Colonel. How much you asking for? Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you, Sonny. Uh, this car's got a lot of sentimental value to us. Oh, I understand that. That part of her you can keep. You tell me a fair price for the rest of her, and I'll write you a check right now. you tearing up here? It's Minnie's. Transmission job. Well, I just bought Colonel Lee's new convertible out there. Got a shimmy in her. And the rear caps that do that sometimes, at high speeds. Yeah, well, you just go balance her up. I ain't got much time. I'd like to help you, Mr. Butts, but I promised Smitty this transmission job by this evening. Well, you just call Smitty. You tell him you got to work on Officer Butt's car. He can come back tomorrow. Sorry, but I won't have a phone until next week. Besides, Smitty's mama is real sick. He got to go up to the Capitol and pick her up tonight. Now, if you bring it in tomorrow, it won't hurt to drive until then. That's about what I figured. Should have known better to think a nigger could fix it. Wasting my time. Hell, boy. You're gonna be back at Mickey Shelton's in a month anyway. Sweeping floors, fixing flats. <laughs> The color bed, and you talk to him. Is that a fact? <laughs> a political meeting of sorts was held one night in a hillside on Pine Mountain. The clan initiated Sonny Butts as a member. 
Tommy Allen was a senior statesman in the Klan. By that time, he turned over the reins to Emmett Spence, who'd grown into the image of his daddy horse, every inch his name. This small group served as a sort of political action committee for the Klan. Their action, as usual, had a single focus. This time we did something about our nigga soldier boy. That's right. And I say we start with Mr. Marshall Peters. Mickey's right. Marshall Peters is the leader of Braytown. He's getting them all stirred up. Registering to vote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's burn him out. Burn him out. That's all we got to do. Here. 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 There's going to be no burning or horse whipping. We'll just bring the whole town down around us. Yeah, Tommy's right. We got to do this legal. For instance, I find some way to get Marshal Peters in jail. And once I get him in jail, I guarantee you, he won't be a problem to nobody no more. <laughs> Chief Lee, as per your request regarding the deceased young boy, Frank Collins, who I embalmed yesterday, as described to you earlier, in addition to the bullet wound from a heavy firearm. Contents of Chief Lee's old roll-top desk continued to fascinate Sonny Butts, especially the notes and papers referring to the unsolved murders of several young boys. F.F. ordered handcuffs. P.T. Brown, police supply. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just love him. <laughs> this is just like the one you left in the basket for Billy and me. Remember, Mr. Funderburg? Yes, I recall that very well. I do recall that. Mm -hmm. You startled me. I'm real sorry about that, ma'am. Let me get that for you. I've got it, thanks. Just trying to be a service. That's what your police force is for. I commend you, Officer Butts. Hey, Sonny. Maybe there's some other way I can be of service. I mean, a widow needs service now and then. What can I do for you, Officer Butts? That's what I was just about to ask you. Ask me? Ask me what? Nice place you got here. Real nice. Tucked way back. Real quiet-like. Could raise a lot of hell back here and <laughs> nobody would know the difference. What do you mean? Well, you know, target practice, things like that. They say you're pretty good with guns. I stay proficient with firearms, yeah. That's good. Did you ever think of going into police work? I mean, with your experience. No. Well, one time, maybe. 
Not really. Yeah. Well, things have changed a lot, I guess. Not like the old days when old Chief Lee first started. You remember him? Yes. Well, he was really just a farmer. Ought never to have been chief of police. I always said. Well, he sure kept some real interesting records. What's that? I gotta get back on patrol. I'll drop in again. Uh, might be a good idea to give me a call first. I get a little busy sometimes. Just give me a call. I'll do that. I'll give you a call. just opened in the garage this morning and I found the lock broke. When I looked around to see if anything been stored, I come on this. He called me. I told him to bring it directly here. You haven't got some friends running shine, have you, Peters? No, sir. I ain't never been mixed up in that kind of stuff. Chief, someone's obviously trying to put the frame on Marshall. I wouldn't go so far as that just yet. I'll have Officer Butts go out and Take a look around later. I'd prefer to have you go out there with us right now, Chief. I want you to impound this as evidence, and then I'd appreciate it if you'd personally investigate the break-in yourself. Make the official report. Charlie, lock this stuff up in a cell for the time being. You nervous, Charlie? You look a little nervous. That's evidence. I wouldn't want you to drop that. Chief. I'm Marshal Peters, attorney. May I ask you just what the devil you think you're doing here, Sheriff? Take it easy, Counselor. I got a tip this morning that your client was running white lightning from his garage. I got a warrant here, all legal and proper. Peters turned into white lightning to me a few minutes ago. That's pretty damn smart of you, Peters. You must have known we had the tip, right? You can ask me your questions, butts. Marshall found his place had been broken into. He called me first thing when he discovered the alcohol. Now, he could have just hidden the stuff, but he called a lawyer and asked for advice, and I gave it to him. If I were your lawyer, I would advise you to try and find out who attempted to frame him. Your search here looks like deliberate vandalism to me. Come over here, Shaking Billy. Come on. I'm not altogether convinced that folks around here is ready to make a state senator out of a nigger lawyer. You ought to think about that a real long time. Your daddy got himself killed trying to be nice to these folks. My daddy was killed by a man half dead with malaria. Out of his head with fever, protecting his son. Just try and be helpful, Colonel. 